Welcome out to another episode of Drake's Dungeon. Today I am joined by one of our uh, QA folks. Uh, QA is uh, short for Quality Assurance. And uh, he is oftentimes our, what we like to refer to as our release captain, uh, who helps guide uh, these these releases uh, from, from start to finish. Uh, so uh, let me give it up for Big Dog. Welcome, Big Dog. Hey, thanks for having me, Drake. Thank you for uh, being on the show. You are, uh, as far as our QA people, one of the most involved in our community. Um, so I think, I, hopefully, I think a lot of people have recognized your name. They've maybe seen you on Discord, maybe talked to you about some bugs or things like that that have been reported. Yeah, um, I, you know, I come from a customer service background uh, before uh, before I started here at Kicksize. So um, I really like being. Um, in tune with the community and uh, one of the best ways of doing that is just talking with people and and interacting. So it's part of the job, one of the parts of the job that I uh, really enjoy. That's good. You keep a good ear to the ground. I mean, there's uh, so many times where like I have seen an issue come up on discord and I go to report it and you're already working on it because you saw it on discord (laughs) as well. So it's always great to, to see that kind of engagement. And I know that the players love it and know that, that there is that commitment to getting things uh, checked out. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Um, I think uh, I think keeping keeping an ear to the ground uh, to what our players and and you know uh, what our customers are saying it's really important. You know, we want to we want to do we want to put out a good game for everybody, and uh, and listening to the community is a really big part of that. Right on. Well, before we get into the the main interview, let's just do a little recap of what's kind of come out over the the last month mm-hmm. since our last episode. We've got the full versions of Mikey, Braden, and Laura, as well as uh, the the very limited Shadow Sarkis. Have you had a, pl- a chance to, to play around with these? I mean, I know you test these things, <laughs> but have you had a chance to like really like in your own personal account, go around and play around with these yet? Yeah, so when, uh, when E100 uh, came out, the uh, Chaos Century there with uh, Sarkis being the uh, reward, I definitely wanted to make sure I was getting on online there and, uh, and playing around with Sarkis. Um, I really, I, I like the unit. I think it's a lot of fun. I think the way that uh, you unlock the unit was really cool, um, very rewarding. Uh, I think that was really important that we uh, we have a really, really awesome reward for for those that uh, that stuck it out and, and got all those map pieces. Um, so I really wanted to play around with Sarkis and, and also getting uh, getting a chance to use uh, the smoke screens. Um, cool unit all around. Love the design. Art team did a really good job with that. Um, with our full release heroes, um, you know, I, I was a huge fan of the escort when I first started, uh, not that I, I still am a big fan of it. Um, so to see a Braden unit come out, uh, that one's been a lot of fun pairing him up with, uh, with my escort platoon, uh, been really fun using him. Uh, I, honestly, I've been actually finding a lot of use for, for Mikey, especially with uh, heroic showdown dropping today. Um, it's playing a lot, little, uh, with him earlier today. And found them to be quite useful. Yeah, uh, with Laura, I've been using Laura in my base defense, uh, trying mm-hmm. to, um, you know, because I, I still use my my sentries uh, mostly as base defense now. Now that the devouts are out, so having having Laura in there as well certainly helps bolster those a little bit more. Oh, always got love for Laura. Yeah, I love that Mikey. Uh, you know, being based off of. You know, an older unit that didn't really get too well received when it came out. I'm mm-hmm. loving to see the reaction that people are getting for the hero version. You know, I think I think it's always great. And, you know, Braden's a, a pretty recent uh, unit. You know, the escort's pretty recent, but the disruptor. You know, it's been a while that since since people have really actually cared about a disruptor. So it's always good to like see that excitement for something old that we've kind of dusted off and and pumped up a little bit. It, it is nice to see uh, the Mikey hero bring some relevance back to that unit. Um, it, it, yeah, it's just, it's, uh, it, it's good. To, I, I think our heroes should be strong and, and, uh, and I like it when they're, when they're tough and useful. Um, that's, uh, that's the best gameplay for, for my buck for sure. Right on, right on. You are in QA, quality, quality assurance. What exactly would you say you really do? How would you describe your day to day job? <laughs> Well, um, what uh, in a nutshell, I play the game. It's obviously a lot more uh, in depth than that. Um, I, I spend a lot of time just uh, 
crossing the T's, dotting the I's, making sure that uh, that everything in our game is is functioning as it should, as it was intended by our very talented engineers and designers, um, and making sure that uh, it's stable uh, once it goes out to to our players. Obviously, you know it, it's a game, and like anything, it's uh, there there are rooms, there is room for. Uh, error and things to go wrong. And that's also where I come in is is identifying those uh, where we may have missed something um, and and making sure that we, we change our process so that uh, we try to minimize that in the future. Mm -hmm. You know, with, when you're actually testing things out before they, before they actually make it into the game, what are some challenges that might pop up that, maybe players wouldn't think about, you know, because sometimes something will make it into the game and might have a minor bug or something like that. You know, how, how is it the, that those things might go miss or just challenges in general on spotting things that might not be that common? Well, I mean, sometimes, obviously, human error, uh, you know, none of us are perfect. So uh, things fall through the cracks. It, it's, I think what uh, a lot of people don't recognize is how much data and how how large a scale um, all the, our game is really, um, and checking all of that off it can be a little daunting sometimes. And you know when you're when you're looking at a big long spreadsheet, it, yeah, human error again. Sometimes you're going to miss something. Yeah, well, you know, I, I think a lot of people don't know this as well, but when we have releases where sometimes there's a lot of bugs that pop up that are things that are missed, Mm -hmm. you know, we get together and we have meetings about that. So we can figure out like, Oh, maybe we should include this in our testing in the future or, you know, things like that. So we definitely learn from our mistakes. We, we, we make it a very big point to try to figure that out without a doubt. And, you know, it. uh, I I take it, uh, I take it personally when I miss something um, and I don't want to do it again. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, we are constantly revising, uh, revising our test plans, revising how we how we create our test plans, um, and often we're having having discussions on on how we're testing, how we can test better, and um, and what that overall process looks like. Um, trying to obviously be efficient as possible. Um, we don't, you know, we want to get this stuff out to our players as quickly as can, um, but we want it to be stable. Right. So let's say something does make it into the game. There's a bug that is found in the game. Some things are really easy to fix. Some stuff is just, oh, we 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 found this. Let's just change the data and boom, it's fixed. But yeah. some things are certainly a lot more complicated and take a bit longer to A, identify, B, reproduce, C, you know, uh, actually get a fix in place, D, testing that fix, E, getting it deployed into the game and making sure that it's still working in the game. Can you go through a little bit of what the life, cy- uh, the life cycle of a bug is? Like, you know, if, if somebody reports a bug or if we find a bug, how do we go about identifying it, fixing it, getting it into the game, things like that? Yeah, well, I mean, you, you, you really you kind of nailed the steps uh, right there. Um, obviously we get, we get reports, uh, whether that be from players, uh, sometimes it comes from within our team. Somebody notices something and calls it out. Um, basically from that point, it's okay. It's on our radar. Uh, one of us, uh, either myself or, or one of the other guys on my team, uh, we'll start looking into it, uh, reproduction, see if it's actually an issue, um, or if it's just maybe a one-off thing, uh, cause those do happen as well. Um, from there it's verify okay yeah this is a bug we know how to repro it here are the steps uh the next step is really finding out okay what's the scale is this a quick fix um or is this something that we need to we need to put through the proper channels here uh and and that's that's also the next step is finding finding the proper channels does this need to go to a designer Does, does it require an engineering fix and figuring out who is best suited to uh to tackle that task um our job isn't done there, obviously, you know, the, the, uh, the bug goes to either our engineering or, or design team, um, to, uh, to get a fix in, then it pops back to us. We verify the fix, we test it on our environments. Um, and then, yep, it gets pushed live and we do another check on live, make sure, yep, it didn't break anything, make sure it didn't break anything else either. And, uh, and that's, that's basically that basically the life of a uh, life of a bug. Right. You know, and like I, I said, there there are some things that we can just easily fix in data. You know, like mm. 
some things are just, uh, you know, there, there might be just a little piece of uh, like a number we need to change. And it's super fast, super quick, requires no downtime, you know, uh, certain, certain things that are just super simple. Yeah. But then there are some things that we have to make a fix for that we have to deploy into the game. And then there are those really troublesome ones, those ones that, you know what, if we fix this, we have to take the entire game down. You know, like yeah. a, a, in order to in order to fix it. Sometimes you got to pick the hill that you want to die on, and right. uh, for a few of those, it, 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 that can definitely be um, be a deciding factor. Do we have to bring the game down? Um, and then at that point, it's kind of it's figuring out the priority. Um, is this something that we absolutely have to fix? It's game breaking. Everyone's going to hate us, but we got to take the game down. We got to fix it. Those are extremely rare. I think since I've yeah. been here. I think I've seen it maybe once or twice. It um, certainly hasn't happened in, gosh, I, I want to say five, six months now. I don't think yeah. we've had to bring the game down to fix a bug yeah. in quite a while now, which is yeah. good. I mean, that's a testament to how good of a job that you and the rest of the QA team do in getting, <laughs> you know, making sure everything uh, works as best as it possibly can. Yeah. Now, we have bugs that sometimes we have not been able to fix, you know, like, or, or things that are kind of out there that we just haven't cracked yet. If there's a bug that for some reason we just aren't able to figure out how it works or even confirm it on our end, can you go through, I guess, how, how do I word this? The process of trying to find the information for something that we can't figure out? Well, uh, that that doesn't usually fall to me. <laughs> that that uh, that'll go to our our uh, usually our engineers because they know our game inside out. They know the code. They know what makes it tick, and even sometimes they're stumped, uh, and it takes them a while. Obviously, you know we we put out a lot of updates for our game, so they're they're working on that while they're also trying to work on our new features and and the and the cool stuff that we want to release to the players. So sometimes naturally things are going to take a bit of a seat on the back burner. Um, again, that comes to kind of figuring out the priorities of, of what needs to be fixed right away, what can kind of sit there for a little while longer while we come up with a fix. You know, I think I've seen, we've seen in the past where we can get a fix, but sometimes it's it's quick and dirty, it's ham-fisted, and there's potential for, for a, lot more, um, uh, a lot more things going wrong. So sometimes it's, it, we have to take that kind of that slow, methodical approach where our engineers can really really take the time um, and make sure that we're, we're fixing this the right way. Um, it's not going to have any negative impacts on the rest of our game. Right. You know, and I, I think that's the thing too. Like I, I can understand from a player perspective, you see a bug and you think, well, they fixed this bug. Why can't mm -hmm. they just easily fix this bug? And, you know, and, and some, there are certainly uh, not, not all bugs are the same shape and size. Yeah. Uh, some of them are very large, intimidating, have teeth, and they bite at us when we try to fix them. So, you know, uh, I definitely think that adds a, a bit of insight onto, you know, the, the process. Now, let, let's say from a player perspective, you come across a bug in the game. What can they best do to help us get that fixed? What can a player do to really help us out? Well, um, I mean, I get I get bug reports on Discord. Players um, players ping me and and let me know when you know when they found something, and uh, and I don't discourage that in any way, shape, or form. Give me all the bugs you got, guys. Um, the best way to help me out is video. Honestly, if you have the capability to take a video of something to show me it in action, this this uh, this bug that you're that you're seeing, that gives me a, a really good jumping off point for repro. Um, screenshots, while they can be useful sometimes, um, I can, you know, the validity of, of screenshots isn't always there. They can be easily manipulated and, and it doesn't tell the full story. Video helps a lot. There's really no substitute for video. I would say, um, if you can get it, if you can get it in, in footage and show me that it's happening, um, it's a lot easier to identify. Yeah. I, I would, I would also add to that too, uh, on, while video is certainly great, just a brief step by step uh, of what we're Absolutely. looking at too, because yeah. you know in our in our battles a lot is going on. So sometimes oh, yeah. if we get just a video without context, it can be a little hard to kind of parse through what exactly I'm supposed to look at. It's so much, 
Yeah, as much detail as you can possibly give, I think that that's the best. You know, it, whether it be screenshots, video, and a, and a de- you know some details of of what you did before, what happened during, um, that that goes a long way. It goes a long yeah, way in bug repro. Even a timestamps on uh, when to look, like a, mm-hmm. you know, watch from thirty seconds to you know a minute fifteen. Yeah, uh, and and look at what my X unit is doing. Um, you know, uh, so that kind of type of stuff, cause I know, you know, a lot of the stuff too, like I report things to you mm-hmm. and, and those are sometimes the things that I'm trying to get from players as well. So, um, yeah, I definitely understand that video with just a, a description on what ex- exactly we should be looking for in that video. Yeah. I think the, the combination of those two things are going to help out a lot. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and to kind of go back to your point from before there with, uh, you know, the, the player perspective of, of bugs. And man, I've been there, you know, like I, I was, uh, I've been a gamer my entire life. And uh, before I before I even joined this, this wonderful industry, uh, I was I was on that side, you know, I was on the fan side being like, Oh, man, like, why can't they fix this? Like, it, it seems so easy. And to really take the step inside and see the see the machine from the inside out now. Oh, I have a I have a real respect and appreciation for for what our our incredibly talented team of designers and engineers across the company uh, do for for all of our games. It's it's really it's quite a process. Well, as somebody that works with you and works with our QA team, I definitely have to say you guys do a great job. Um, you know, especially with. Uh, with a game that has been around as long as ours, with as much content as ours, I, I'm not sure a lot of people realize the more stuff you have in the game, the harder it is to test for everything. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I think you guys do a, a wonderful job. So uh, I appreciate that very much. We have a really passionate, um, we have a really passionate fan base, uh, or, or you know, of players here, and uh, and that uh, I find that very inspiring um, because I I relate to that. Um, I love the passion, and and I love how 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 much our players enjoy enjoy playing the game. Um, it's, it gives me a reason to get up and, and come to work every day. You know, right on. Well, big doc, thanks for taking the time out. I, I know that uh, you got a, a busy day every day, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I appreciate you taking the time to talk with me and talk with the community about you know what it is you do here and the process of getting bugs fixed. Yeah, um, thanks so much, Drake. Yeah, appreciate the uh, time time to come on and, and talk a little bit about what we do. Right on. Well, uh, this is it for Drake's Dungeon uh, with with Big Dog, and I will be back next month with uh, another episode for y'all. As always, thank you for playing War Commander. Bye.